Well, good morning, friends, to Max Q Barbecue. It's a very, very cold morning out here, and we're getting ready for a nice brisket cook today. Let's get this cover off this pit and get a fire started. We're gonna remove this charcoal basket and cook directly on the base of the fire chamber. We want that low and slow smoky flavor so we're gonna be cooking with natural wood on the base of the cooker. Check out how easy it is to remove the fire charcoal basket. Perfect fit, slides in and out. I think 27 degrees and 24 degrees and 23 degrees, it's cold enough. Good morning, friends. It's still 27 degrees outside, but we got the pit running been adjusting the upper damper and the fire pit butterfly to try to get the temperature stabilized at around 250 degrees. So it's rising a little bit. It may have opened up the uh, upper damper a little bit too much. I'm just gonna nudge it a little bit. See if I can slow that uh, airflow down just a little bit. As you open the upper damper, on the stack damper, it allows more air to flow through. And even if your butterfly is closed on your fire pit, the draw is going to pull the air through faster, even though it might be a smaller groove. And that speedier air is gonna increase your combustion. So by closing the upper damper, you're gonna slow the airflow through the pit down and slow your combustion down. Working in combination with the upper damper is the fire pit butterfly. And you can control the amount of smoke by how much you open or close the lower damper. It also controls the airflow as well. But mostly you wanna work these two in combination to control your airflow to get your rock temperature for your pit. Here's our brisket for today. Today's brisket is a special order for my mother-in-law in Louisiana, who my wife is going to visit next week. And uh, my mother-in-law asked her, are you gonna bring me some brisket? She said, sure. So we have a special order to bring. Here we go. It's 8.30 in the morning, 27 degrees. Welcome back, friends. Took a little bit of a break this morning and ran up to Starbucks to get some coffee and have a breakfast sandwich with some friends. So uh, the pit's been left unattended for a while. Temperature is still at about 220 degrees, but just want to swing over here. Look and see what we're at. It's time, it's getting hungry. Well, it's down to 216. And temperature on the top's probably just under 225. So we're gonna come over here to the firebox and see what we can do to revive this fire and i apologize i'm trying to do this one-handed oh yeah it looks good though still got plenty of wood in there just needs a little tender tlc here as i work these coals around oops knocking a little bit of it out of the knocked a little bit out of the there but yeah once i get this door open i'm sure it's gonna take off there a little bit more. And I'll throw a couple of more splits on there. Nice locally sourced hickory. Oh uh, yeah, that'll be kicking that fire up. Alrighty, here you go folks. That'll give her something to work on and that temperature is gonna rise pretty quick because the door's open. So I'll get that door closed so we can get that temperature stabilized. Nice, wonderful fire going this morning. We'll be needing to come back in about an hour and feed it again. Welcome back, friends. It's now 10.30 a.m. on our holiday, well, not holiday, this is Marion's birthday special request brisket. Our pit's running about 225 degrees right now. It's been an hour since we uh, last fed the fire. So I wanna check on everything, see how it's burning. So it's been uh, 
when you feed it, it goes up to about 270 and then it starts to drift back down around 250 and, and now it's down to 225. So I want to check on it. Probably need to adjust uh, some of the wood. Oh, it looks like we got a really good uh, set of wood here. It looks like it's burning very, very nicely. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just square it up a little bit, get those pieces towards the middle. Now that's gonna raise the temperature and then we're going to go ahead and put a couple more pieces of our locally sourced hickory. These are about 12 inches, and they're about uh, one and a half to two inches by about two and a half to three inches. So we'll go ahead and put that right here on the side. And here's another one. It's a little bit, a little bit wider. It's about closer to three inches by two inches, three by two. We'll put it on this side and I'm going to close this down. You can see how the flames are. You open that up and let some airflow. It really starts to, to jump up there. But as we close that door and get that air cut off, it slows that fire down, controls our temperature. All righty, we'll see you back in about an hour. Okay, we just fed the fire. It was about 225 before we fed the fire. We just fed the fire and had the door open and you can see it just steady rising there. It should stabilize here and start going back down. Welcome back, friends. It's only been about 30 minutes since we fed the fire, but you can see our temperatures are dropping. This is not due to the lack of fuel or lack of air. This is due to the fact that the splits that I put on about 30 minutes ago are off to the side and not towards the center core of the fire. So we're gonna open the door here and make some adjustments to the fire. All right, friends, let's take a look at this uh, firebox and see what's going on here. We know we got enough fuel, we know we got enough air, so we're not getting enough temperature. So let's take a look. And as you can see, our splits that we put on here a few minutes ago are off to the sides here. So we're not getting a, a lot of uh, heat out of them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our split, we're gonna roll that up towards the top of the fire so we can get a little more burn out of it. It's not uncommon for this to happen about this point in the fire, starting to get a lot of ash accumulation, which is kind of inhibiting the uh, flow of air and burn. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop a couple more splits in here on the sides, uh, just to uh, let them go ahead and heat up and dry out. But uh, we got the ones in the middle here now. A little bit of separation so they can open up and start uh, burning a little faster here. We're gonna leave it open just a little bit, let them, let them ignite, let them get some of the smoke out of here. That's all it takes, just kind of keep that fire going. And then once they uh, get to burning good, we'll go ahead and close that up and let our air vents handle the combustion rate. And as you can see, it's already just in a, that short period of time it's already uh, catching on and starting to uh, flame up there. So we're gonna go ahead and close this on up and let our airflow handle it. Alrighty, keep an eye on it and we'll keep you posted. A couple of minutes have passed, but I wanna show you what happens after we made those adjustments. It's quite visible. Remember how we had nothing but smoke? Well, now we've got good clean combustion and those splits that we put towards the middle, or see they're igniting and burning the way they should and uh, contributing heat properly to the fire. Um, but if I leave it like this for very long, it's gonna get too hot. See how those flames are reaching up into the, into the chamber? So I need to close this door so I can choke that back down. And of course, once I do that, then the flames will burn at a more controlled pace. Welcome back friends. We're three and a half hours into the cook and you can see everything's moving along really nicely. Our temperature spiked a little bit. I got inside watching Pitmasters on TV and uh, let it jump up a little bit, but it came straight back down. 
So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open this pit and take a look at the brisket and then spritz it. Okay, let's open this pit up and take a look and uh, see what we got here. It's been three and a half hours. It's been smoking, hadn't opened the pit. Temperature's been running really good today. All right, look at that. Look at that color. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, spritz it down. Now notice we have it fat side up right now. And then I've got these little pieces here that I'm just cooking on the side. They're gonna cook really quick. But I just didn't, I don't like throwing meat away, so I always make a couple of beef nuggets. So we got these little beef nuggets here. And right now I've been cooking it fat side up. Part of the reason why I cook fat side up on this particular pit, remember the smoke's coming over here from the right, coming up across the top, so a lot of the hot air is up the top. So that hot air is on top of that fat, so it's helping to render that fat and not dry our, our meat out too much. Now the downside of that is I sacrifice a little bit of my bark by not having uh, Changing those probes around like that, you can tell right away this thing's got a little, it's not tenderized, it's pretty tough. So that's a good way to learn how to feel your brisket to know how your cook is coming. Of course, we don't expect it to be tenderized yet. It's still only at 130 to 140 degrees internal. It's only when it gets to about 170 to 180 de degrees does that collagen start breaking down and turning into gel. And that's when you get your real tenderizing. Okay, we're going over to the fire next. As you can see by our clock, it's uh, about 12 p.m. So we put this on at 8.30, which means that we've been cooking for about three and a half hours. So uh, let's take a look at our fire. We know the temperatures have dropped quite a bit. I still suspect we'll have plenty of wood. See, we got plenty of wood in here, but we need to uh, break these coals down. And that piece is still pretty solid, so we're going to bring it over to the middle. And this piece is pretty solid. So we're going to bring it over to the middle. And the challenge is, once we start bringing that wood to the middle, it gets right there in the middle of that airflow, and you can see we get a lot of heat coming off of that. We're going to go ahead and put a couple of more splits in here, get them started, but uh, hopefully not too much burning but get them ready to roll to the middle and you look at that fire now that's a little bit hot a little bit high so we got to get this door closed and shut those vents down so we don't overheat the overheat our brisket go ahead and close this air up a little bit got to loosen that up actually have a 9 16 inch wrench there makes it a little bit easier. All righty, I'm gonna go work on the dampers, close up the damper up top, make sure this thing doesn't spike too high. Just wanted to give you an idea of my air control here. That's where I'm running the butterflies. That's uh, what, about two thirds closed here on the uh, Firebucks butterfly. And we're gonna come over here and look at the stack damper. And you can see that's only about, about an inch open. So that's about 75, 80% closed on the damper. And our goal there is to keep the temperature from rising too fast and too hot. And you can see it's already coming on up 249, 250. So hopefully it'll stabilize, or our plan is, is to stabilize this temperature between 250 and 275 and let her cook. Welcome back friends. It's 1230 or 1225. The temperature is falling quite a bit, so you can see our uh, wood needs to be stirred up here a little.
this is where electronics really can make a difference. Put one of those blowers on here that automatically feed air to it when you need more temperature. That kind of defeats the purpose of being the pit master, doesn't it? Don't you think? Well, let me know in the comments below what you think about automation on your barbecue and your fire management. Welcome, friends. It's 1.20 p.m. And our temperatures have been holding steady around 250, but they've started to fall. So that's generally a good indication that this fire needs a little bit of tending. So we're going to go ahead and break down these uh, splits here that have been burnt in. And I'm going to roll these to the middle. That lighten up right away. As soon as I roll them over, I'm just gonna throw a couple of hickory chips in there. That's just to help get it to ignite. And we're gonna put some uh, more of our hickory splits in there. This is a good two by two inch split. Boy, look how fast that. Uh, how fast that lit. So let me go get this closed up so the temperatures are going to spike and so I can close it up and uh, slow that burn rate down a little bit. All right, see you the next trip. Welcome back friends. It's been about 25 minutes since we last tended the fire and uh, starting to see the temperatures drop around 2.30. Just want to check in on it and see how we're doing. And as predicted, the, uh, the uh, splits in the middle have broken down. And now we're going to move the splits from the edge to the middle. I'm working those coals a little bit just to that's going to be a hot fire, so I'm going to have to get over there and shut the air off here pretty quick. Go ahead and put a split on each side to get those warmed up and queued up. So basically, uh, the splits to the outer edge are in there warming up, and then we'll move in the middle when we need more heat. Shut that down before it gets too hot. So I'm going to go adjust the upper damper as well because it's going to get a temperature spike until they kind of stabilize a little bit. Welcome back, friends. It's 2.30 p.m. And our pit is starting to cool off a little bit. It's about 237, almost just below 240 degrees. Our brisket temperatures are 158 and 147, so they're rising nicely. But it's time to stoke the fire. Let's open up this fire pit door and let's take a look and see what it looks like in there. Well, you guys have seen this view before. Our, uh, our splits to the middle have broken out. We're just making, adding to our coal bed. And our splits on the outer edge have degraded and burned. So we're going to move them to the middle over the top of the coals, just like we've done before. Spread that out a little bit. And you can see how they just flare up really big. So we'll have to get this door closed here pretty quick. They're going to overheat their, their pit. I'll we'll go ahead and put uh, two more splits in there. Get the door closed. All righty. Now we're going to go over and uh, spritz the brisket and keep it moist as we uh, work its way through the stall. After stoking the fire, you can see the temperatures rising. It's pretty normal. Get that fire going. So we got to make sure we keep our air constricted. We do that by adjusting our stack vent. And you can see our butterflies are about two thirds closed, one third open. But you can see inside there's quite a bit of quite a bit of flame there. It'll all settle down here in a minute. Welcome back, friends. It's now 2.50 p.m. Let's see what our fire's doing. I expect it to be just like the last time. 
where the uh, splits in the middle have completely broken down into coals and the splits on the sides just need to be turned so that they can burn. closed up so we don't fry the meat. You can see how much that flame popped up there. So we're going to get a little bit of a temperature spike, but we're going to choke that temperature back with our, our butterfly. Now we noticed that we have only about uh, half an inch open and we're going to adjust the stack damper again to choke it down so we don't overheat our meat. See you back in another half hour. Welcome back friends. It's uh, 317 in the afternoon, p.m., and uh, time to tend our fire again. We're gonna follow the same process and procedure that we've been following on the previous fire treatments. We're gonna come in here, break down the coals in the middle. We're gonna take our splits that have been heating up on the side, roll those to the middle, the center part of the fire. Of course, they will immediately combust and burst in flames, so all that air going through there. And we're going to set that up with some new splits on the side here. Looks like I'm going to need to uh, go make some more splits. My, uh, I'm down to the short ends of the splits here, so I'm going to have to head to the garage and cut some off. But let me go ahead and get this door closed before I uh, temperature spike too much that's all you have to do for another 30 or 45 minutes and it'll be come back it'll be just the way it was before all right i'm gonna go spritz the uh, brisket while it's spiking in temperature and uh, go out to the garage and split some more wood let's take a peek at that brisket it's looking really really good it's getting a nice color on it i don't know if you can see put a little shade on it there but it really looks good spritz it and get it closed up here welcome friends it's 4 5 p.m and uh, let's check on this fire okay as we would expect our coals here in the middle or splits in the middle are breaking down we're going to move the splits from the edges over to the center that's one of those big chunks of wood i put in there previously Right, now we've got those all moved to the middle and let's replace those on the edges. Got some old parts pieces here I'm going to put in there to get rid of. These are the cut off ends of the firewood length. Basically I take about a 16 inch piece and cut it down to 12. So end up with a lot of four inch pieces. Let me get this closed up so we don't spike the temperature too much. <coughs> While the temperature is spiking, I'm going to go ahead and spritz the, the brisket. Good evening, folks. It's about 435, 440, and it's been about 30 minutes since we last tended the fire. So we're going to take a look at it. Remember last time we put some of those uh, short chunks on there. So they're Probably burning a little bit slower, but we're going to go ahead and break down any coals and uh, organize the fire so it'll continue to run pretty steady. Yep, look at that. There you go. That's a big fire, so we want to get these closed up so we don't overheat everything. Now, one thing you may not have noticed, I've been kind of monkeying with this 9 16 inch uh, bolt here, loosening and tightening that butterfly. So if I need to 
cut down on the ear. You got me a 9 16 inch box wrench handy. I can loosen this up and uh, close that up a little bit. And just put a little, little bit of a turn on it. There we go, just keep it snug. So that's how we manage the airflow. You notice there's a little bit of, looks like some rosin there, but that's actually some of the boiled linseed oil. Last time I cooked, I wiped it good and down with linseed oil just to keep it coated, maintain the protection, keep it from rusting. It's doing great. All righty, we'll be back in another half hour, 45 minutes. Welcome back, friends. It's 5.30 in the evening. If we were going to continue to cook on the pit, we'd be pulling it up. We would be adding more wood to the fire, but we're going to go ahead and pull the brisket off. It's reached 172 in some places and 152 in the other. We're going to pull it off and finish it in the oven. So just want to show you it's dark out here. Got a little video light going. Can't hardly see anything, but uh, what I want to do is uh, show you our fire fire looks really good it's really holding well burning well it's actually holding temperature great got a great coal bed but we're done so i'm gonna move the wood all to the middle so it'll go ahead and burn out and uh pull the brisket and bring it inside and finish it in the oven okay friends we'll be pulling the brisket off the pit and bring it in inside. Hope you can see there, it's dark out tonight. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull these probes and I'm gonna bring those in. So I'm gonna take our brisket. Boy, that's nice. I don't know if you can see that. But that thing is beautiful. Put that over in our tray and bring that inside. Okay, friends, we've brought the brisket inside. We've got our oven preheated to 275 degrees. I just poured a a little bit of uh, some beef broth, a little can of beef broth over the top of it to make it a little more moist. And I'm going to add just a little bit of some uh, smoked beef tallow over it to uh, make it a little more juicy. Soften up some of those uh, burn ends and edges. And now we're going to wrap it in aluminum foil and finish it in the oven. The internal temperature is about 175 degrees right now. We're going to leave it in the oven until we get it up to just around 200 degrees. And then we'll take it out and let it rest. Open up the oven here. Pull out the tray. probes so we keep track of our temperature put these in by feel temperature is coming up 149 129 so when we get to 199 friends I hope you enjoyed our video today before we close out I want to close the video today with a view of our temperature chart from start to finish of our cook wanted to point out a couple of items for you on the cook and on the temperatures in the pit note how well the temperatures were controlled between 225 and 275 however there were a couple of exceptions during the day and both of them were due to me being off doing other things around the house 
first around 11.30, I went inside to watch an episode of Pitmasters and resulting in a little bit of a temperature spike while I was watching the YouTube channel. Then around 12.45, I went next door to help my neighbor fix his fence. Again, had a little bit of a temperature spike around 340 degrees and a little bit of a temperature drop below 200 while I was off paying attention to other things and not the pit. But what happened later was I got back in my groove and was checking on it every 30 minutes. So between 1.30 and 5.30, things were also very, very stable throughout that period of time of the cook. And of course, at 5.30, you know that we took the brisket off the pit and placed it in the oven. Now, a couple of things are interesting about the graft after I put it in the oven. First, you'll notice that the temperatures were pretty stable around 250 degrees between 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. And this is because I had the oven on bake as the setting. Then went in and checked the oven and started adjusting some things and switched it over to convection bake. And you'll notice when I switched it over to convection bake how the temperature varied on a very nice sinusoidal waveform as it was holding temperature around 275 degrees. Around 10.30, I, pulled, I turned the ovens off, opened the door, checked the temperature of the brisket, checked the tenderness of the brisket, everything was fine, closed the oven door back up, and just let the oven cool off on its own and let the brisket rest and come down in temperature. Now, I needed to get this brisket packaged up and ready to go before 7 a.m. on uh, Sunday morning because my wife was leaving to drive to Louisiana to go see her mom for her 93rd birthday. So at 3 a.m., or actually around 2.30 a.m., I got up and carved the brisket, cut it up, vacuum bagged it, and put it away and put it in the freezer so that by 7 a.m., the brisket would be nice and frozen and I could pack it away in the ice chest for her trip to Louisiana, which is about an 11 hour drive. So uh, got all that done, got the brisket prepared, got it all put away, everything went well, got up at uh, 7, 6.30, 7, helped her get packed and on the road with the brisket. And so all's good. Well, I hope you enjoyed our video today and wanna thank everybody for watching. Have a great day.